So last week I spoke with Lieutenant Colonel Bohannon. He's the product manager for the 6.8mm Next Generation Squad Weapon Program over at the Picatinny Arsenal in New Jersey. I wanted to get a better understanding of where the program currently is and how it's tracking straight from the actual decision makers. These are some of the people who are working to field a better rifle to the next generation of US forces. Stick around to the end of the video to learn about my favorite part of the next generation weapon program, the fire control system, which is something we haven't really gone deep into in any of the previous videos covering this weapons program. In this video, we'll get information on how the Army plans to solve the future logistics concerns of having different ammo standards than NATO and the Marine Corps. And we'll learn why the Army believes this program will succeed where many of the past attempts have failed. The Colonel gave us full access to ask any questions we wanted, so I asked him if the M16 is the reason why I could never qualify as expert. Apparently that falls under something called operator error. I asked if the virus had much of an effect on the program. The answer was apparently there was a 30 day slip because the vendors had some issues with their sub suppliers, but that they're still tracking to do the next phase of testing this week where Sig Sauer, General Dynamics and Textron will have their prototype rifles firing them next to government engineers. This closed testing comes after the last phase of testing where the military had 300 soldiers from the 10th Mountain Division test fire and give feedback on the weapons. I learned from the colonel that whichever weapon is ultimately chosen, it needs to ultimately have an 85% acceptance rate among soldiers. So it basically has to have the same acceptance rate as the Chili Mac MRE. Basically, nobody wants to be the unpopular loser rifle that gets peered out of the military by everyone. So this testing happening next this week with the three bids in the running will have six months afterwards to make a final adjustment to their platforms. I say final because next summer they will conduct the final phase where the government will choose the winner of the program. Quote, we plan to award one vendor and then immediately go into production with the plan to start fielding by the end of 2022. End quote. If you're skeptical, this program will actually happen because you maybe fell for one of the past army weapons programs. Maybe you saw the special purpose infantry weapon, future rifle program, advanced combat rifle program, OICW, and you swore you'd never open up again to another weapons program for as long as you live. Just then the 6.8 millimeter next generation squad weapon shows up on Tinder, but you're not sure if you're ready to swipe right yet. No, not after the XM8 program only led to video games weapons. How could you do that to me, XM8? One of the foundations of the program is soldier centered design. We have an unprecedented number of soldier touch points for our weapons program. Soldiers, Marines, and SOCOM give their feedback on the systems, and that feedback will be a factor in the final selection." End quote. This tells me that there's actually a lot of input from the troops that are going to end up actually using this weapon, and that input goes directly into the weapons program. In the past, a lot of weapons have been developed sort of behind closed doors, keeping it away from the rank and file soldiers who actually have to carry the weapons in the field or they would only test the weapons with a special weapons testing unit. The 6.8mm is being tested by more of the actual soldiers for feedback. Quote, I have a list of attributes that we worked out with the Soldier Lethality Cross-Functional Team and Infantry Schoolhouse. We gave them to the industry and said, you guys make guns for a living, tell me what's doable and what's not. Then we went from there. They have certain performance standards that their prototypes need to reach, but it's 100% up to them how they reach those standards by the Army. It sounds to me like they're staying away from the age-old temptation to micromanage the development of the rifles. It sounds like they trust Sig Sauer, Textron, and General Dynamics to reach the standards that they set. Lieutenant Colonel Bohannon had a whiteboard with all the names of the failed weapons programs behind him when we spoke, and he knew each reason why the program didn't work in the eyes of the DoD. In all seriousness though, this is the first time I've spoken to someone above the rank of captain who didn't immediately say why is this enlisted man is still in the room next to me. Quote, the DoD is rewriting the process of how requirements are generated. We're pretty fortunate because we're right at the front of the effort. We took a completely different approach to requirements. I don't have a hard DoD traditional requirement, end quote. He explained that a huge reason why many of those programs may have stalled was because they lost advocacy for them when testing revealed that they weren't better than the current weapon or at least they weren't better enough. So everyone here frequently asks, why did they choose the 6.8 millimeter to drive this needed performance improvement? Here is what we heard back. Quote, the Maneuver Center of Excellence down in Fort Benning, Georgia, commissioned a study that was published in 2017, the Small Arms Ammunition Configuration Study. 
multiple services, research labs and engineer facilities participated in it, the Army Test Command, as well as Department of Defense, and it demonstrated the trade space of different configurations of weapon, ammo, and fire control to reach the next level of performance. The NGSW program embodies all those characteristics, but through the lens of the achievable performance requirements laid out by our vendors, end quote, it sounds to me like they wanted to start from the drawing board. If they started from scratch, it would allow them to have more control over the round. I asked what will happen when the Army has a different round that the Marine Corps and NATO doesn't have. Will there be a problem with the logistics across the board if this program happens? Quote, the Marine Corps is partnered with us in all our soldiers' touch points and plans to evaluate the solutions against their planned modernization strategy. Basically, this sounds like if the Army successfully comes up with a new 6.8mm, then it's likely that NATO and the Marine Corps will eventually switch to the new weapon, even though they're currently in the middle of fielding the M27 IAR 5.56 rifle. Many people in the comments section here have mentioned there's no ammo manufacturing infrastructure in place for the new types of plastic ammo bids. From the conversation with Lieutenant Colonel Bohannon, it sounds like they don't really consider this much of an issue. They will continue using ammo manufacturers to supplement the rounds while also creating their own facilities at Lake City Army Ammunition Plant where they can bring the production up to DOD level quantities, around a billion rounds each year. Anyone who worries the plastic rounds won't stand up to stress tests, the Colonel says that all the bids will have their equipment put through the ringer. All ammo types will be put through extreme heat, extreme cold, and they'll make sure that it can take the kinds of physical abuse, physical falls, or they won't field it. He said that he believes it's likely that training and doctrine will change once the 6.8 is adopted. Giving a guy a type of equipment is only part of the equation. Training will trump equipment all day long. Quote, Lieutenant General Eric Wesley, the director of Futures and Concept Centers, has said that the doctrine often lags behind technology. So when you think about the current way of doing business and then introduce a disruptive technology, there has got to be an acknowledgement of introducing change. Marksmanship training, ranges, operational employment, we're going to give soldiers in the close combat force weapon systems that exceed everything they're familiar with. The new fire control is a high-speed optic that includes a laser rangefinder, ballistic solver, variable powered glass, so even without a battery, you still have reticles. From my conversation, I learned that the new fire control system takes environmental factors into consideration when firing, such as humidity, temperature, pressure. You point at the target, press a button, and the ballistic computer chip inside the new optic does all the calculations to adjust the reticle. It's called a disturbed reticle. From my understanding, it takes your PEC-15, Storm Laser Range Finder, and high-end optic, then puts it into one gun. From an article from military.com written by Matthew Cox, there's a link to his well-written article in the description below. Apparently, a Wisconsin-based optic firm named Vortex has been chosen to make the advanced fire control prototype. The optic has a 1,000 meter laser range finder, and I've fired some of Vortex's other optics before in the past, and I can say firsthand that they're incredibly designed. Not that I know anything about how they're designed. I should say they work great. The bullets hit their target. It's an eight to one by 30 active reticle fire control, so the reticle magnifies as the shooter does. The main idea behind the optic is to allow soldiers to hit targets out to 600 meters while maintaining the ability to still engage in close combat when needed, which is something a lot of optics are unable to integrate seamlessly into one product if you look at the ACOG, for instance. Something I forgot to ask was whether or not this optic can be integrated in the next generation night vision that just came out last year. With the night vision, it supposedly gives soldiers the ability to see the point of view of their optic, which in turn could allow them to shoot around corners. Maybe someone out there watching this knows the answer to that question and can comment below. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Please remember to like and share the video so YouTube continues to promote our content. I'm Chris Cappy, Task and Purpose out.